Hi everyone, in today's video we are going to be taking a look at the differences between audio and MIDI inside of Ableton Live. Let's take a look. Okay, so currently I am in the arrangement view and I'll use the arrangement view initially to show you the examples that I've got set up here, okay? So I have a kick and a bass in audio as well as in MIDI. And I'm gonna to talk to you, first of all, about what MIDI is. So MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface, okay? So what that means is it is a digital language that allows different instruments and softwares to communicate in a sort of musical language, right? So for example, if I had a MIDI keyboard, which is a keyboard that just sends MIDI information. I can press a note on the keyboard and that information will get sent into Ableton and then a sound will play in relation to what note I pressed. Okay, so that's the basic principle. So MIDI itself doesn't actually have a sound to it. Uh, it does not yeah, have any sort of character there. Basically, you press a button, the MIDI... Uh, signal is then triggered on for the button that you've pressed. And then when you take the finger off the button, it's triggered off. Or if you've drawn in MIDI notes, it's triggered on for the duration of the note and then it's triggered off and, or you've re-triggered and you pressed another note, et cetera, et cetera, right? So MIDI information can be a value between zero and 127. So that gives us 128 total values, okay? So those values could translate to the pitch of a musical note. So for example, if I was pressing C3 on my keyboard, that uh, MIDI information would go into a synth and then the synth would play C3. Uh, so it also relates to other values. It's not just notation. It can be things such as what we call velocity. So velocity is how... Uh, heavily we are triggering or playing the instrument. So you'll be able to play, for example, if you think of a real piano or a real guitar, you can play that piano very softly. So your velocity would be very low um, or you could play very heavily and your velocity would be very high. So it's basically sort of like a way of giving you dynamic control over the MIDI information. So you can have uh, quiet, or loud sounds, or, or soft and intense sounds, okay? So um, other things as well that can be recorded through MIDI are things like aftertouch. So, you know, you press the, the button on, and then how quickly do you take your finger off? Like, do you do it rapidly or, or softly, et cetera, et cetera. So there's lots of little pieces of information that can be um, translated in, in MIDI to instruments or other devices. So that's what MIDI is. And what you're looking at here is an Ableton Live MIDI clip. And I've got a MIDI clip here for a kick drum. And I've got a MIDI clip here for a bass line. Okay. And you'll see the MIDI notes are drawn and you can see them up on the timeline here in the arrangement view. But you can also see them inside of the clip view down here. So I've got the bass clip selected. So it's going to show us the MIDI notes for our bass. And if I select this up here, um, we've got the notes for the kick. Okay, so if I come across to my device view, it shows me the device that I've got on this MIDI track, and it's a device called Kick2. I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to come over to the bass MIDI, and I'm going to turn off this MIDI device called Serum. Okay, and if I click on the group, I can put my cursor at the beginning here, and I can press spacebar to play the audio, but or the MIDI, but you'll notice that I actually don't hear anything, okay? So this is giving you an example that MIDI does not have a sound. MIDI is just information in the background that is being sent to a device. In this case, it's Kick2 on the Kick channel, but the Kick2 device is turned off. So without this device being enabled, the MIDI doesn't know what to do. It doesn't know how to make a sound. It's the MIDI device that generates the sound. So in this case, I'll turn it on. 
And you'll see that there'll be information here. These little dots will be lighting up. Actually, I'll keep it turned off. And you'll see that the, the dots light up. This means that the MIDI information is being sent into that device, okay? But the device not being turned on doesn't actually take that MIDI information and then translate it into a sound, okay? So if I turn that on and we listen now, you're gonna be hearing a kick drum. So what is happening is that we are sending a note of F sharp into Ableton. That F sharp is a sixteenth note in length. So it's just a short note. It's not a big long note. And that information is going into the device kick two. And kick two is saying, okay, I've got an incoming MIDI note of F sharp at a sixteenth note length. I am going to generate a sound using my internal um, audio generation, right? It's a synth, so it's generating audio. And in this case, it's a kick drum that I've made. And we're not going into making a sound, but we're just talking about the fact that the MIDI signal comes in, the synth knows that it's to generate the sound that I've created inside of it, and then it comes out the other end to our ears as audio, okay? So here you'll see we're getting a meter and over here, right? So this is a volume meter and we're hearing audio because MIDI does not have a sound. So the MIDI is generating a signal that's going into the synth and the synth is then taking that MIDI saying, okay, it's the note of F sharp. I will take that and generate the sound that the person has created inside of the synth and now you're gonna hear it out as audio, okay? but we have not recorded that kick drum into audio. So every time the MIDI note plays, the synth is generating the sound as new again, okay? So it's not audio that we've saved and recorded. It's just being generated by the synth in real time by our computer's processor, okay? So the processor is uh, doing the number crunching required to generate the sound for us to hear. If we take a look at the, the, the MIDI here for the bass, we can go ahead and turn Serum on and we can have a listen to this. Okay, so now we're hearing the bass line play. And this was to give you an example of velocity, okay? So if you take a look down here, this is the window that allows you to adjust the note velocity for whatever you've drawn in here, okay? And by the way, you can draw notes in by double clicking inside of the piano roll here, right? So I can go up and say, okay, I want a note. And you can see off to the left-hand side here, A sharp one is the note. And I could draw a new note here, all right? And if I want to draw a note of a different length, I could double click, grab it at the end and drag it, or I could grab it at the end here and drag it to make it longer or shorter. Um, I can move it around using the arrow keys, but you'll notice that it's snapping to the grid, okay? So I can right click, on the, um, the uh, note editor here, the MIDI note editor, and I can change the grid dimension. So if I wanted it to be s s like smaller values, finer values, I can change it to a 30 second note. And now I can move that around or I can grab the length and make it shorter. And now it's a 30 second note rather than a 16th note like it was here, okay? So that allows us to move. I can go up and down and around and about and I can use the arrow key if I want. So double clicking will remove it as well. So if you want to yeah, interact with this, double click or if you want to select, you can single click and then you can move up, down, round about. And if you want to hear the notes as you move them, you can press the button here. Right? So that is MIDI. Uh, and we'll just quickly talk about the velocity a little bit more. So the velocity for the first note is, and if I just play three of these notes, you'll hear, right? And you're hearing one's quiet and the other two are loud, okay? That's because I've turned the velocity of the first one all the way down and the velocity of the second two all the way up. So we're hearing a little bit of that first sound, but then we're hearing these two very loudly. So that's velocity, right? So soft velocity versus louder velocity. And that is what's generating the sort of galloping, rolling feel of this bass line. So if I play it, what I can do is I can 
grab the velocity of this note here and turn it all the way up and now listen to the groove. Right, still sounds okay, but if you want the galloping, you can play around with the volume of that first note. And that's a great way to give you an idea of what velocity is. Okay, so that's MIDI. And I just want to give you an example as well that um, I could change this really at any time. So I could take that kick and I could delete it and I could get a different MIDI instrument like another thing of Serum, drop it onto this kick channel and now when I press play, it's no longer a kick. It's just this default sound inside of Serum that's being generated. Okay, so MIDI does not have a sound. What I can do though, is I can turn MIDI into audio and I can do that in two ways. I can actually record it into a channel. So what I could do is I could right click and insert an audio track. So this is a new audio track and I'm gonna right, I'm gonna go control R and I'm gonna go record. And this is the bass playing. And I can send this sound into this channel by coming here and selecting, I want the external sound, so the sound coming from another track, to feed into the record channel here, and I want to record it. So in this case, I go to bass MIDI. I want the bass MIDI to come into this audio track. That's the bass MIDI tra ch channel. I can click here, I can press record, and I can press record here, and now I'm recording in that bass sound. I can press spacebar to stop the record. I can pull that back here. And now I've got the recorded bass. Okay, so now I've turned that from MIDI into audio. What I'll do is I'm just going to delete that now and we're just going to purely talk about the kick and bass that I've got here in audio. I'm going to turn off the MIDI track so I no longer hear the MIDI. So if I press play, we don't hear anything. And now I'm going to enable the audio. I'll turn this group on and now we'll hear the audio kick and bass. Okay. So this is audio. And we've already looked at one way that audio can be created. What is another way that we can create audio? I'm doing it right now with my voice. I'm talking out loud. My voice cords are vibrating and that vibration is being received by the microphone. The vibrations then feed into the microphone. They get translated into an electrical signal. It goes down into my interface. My interface takes that audio and it translates it from analog sound into digital sound. And it does that through the process of sampling the audio, okay? So we've got a sample rate that's set inside of our Ableton Live. If you've looked at the preferences video that I did, you will the audio preferences video that I did, you'll see that I talked a little about, bit about the sample rate. So normal CD quality sample rate is 44.1 kilohertz, okay? So for every uh, second of audio, we are taking a snapshot of it 44.1 thousand times, right? And if we are then looking at the bit depth, CD quality is 16-bit audio, okay? And 16-bit is essentially referring to the dynamic range, okay? So the difference between the quietest part of the signal and the loudest part of the signal, okay? So we sample the audio into the digital world, and then once it goes into the computer, it's now essentially ones and zeros, and it's mapped out as a waveform, okay? So if I click on the kick drum here, and then I come down here to see the clip view selector, you'll see that we've got a waveform here. And this is essentially the instructions that we're sending to the speaker when the audio goes from the digital world back to the analog world and to our ears, okay? So whenever we are speaking or hearing, we are hearing analog, when we're playing back audio inside of our computer, it's effectively in the digital world and it's a digital signal 
inside of Ableton. But of course, like I mentioned, it's getting sent to our sound card. The sound card converts that from the digital back into the analog world and the electrical signal travels to our speakers and the speaker will then vibrate in order to generate the analog energy that our eardrum picks up because our eardrum is like a small flap of skin that vibrates as the air pressure changes and we, our brain translates that into sound, okay? So this is the process that the audio goes through when it's being sampled and being turned into the digital realm. So this is a digital file here. And if I actually click on it, here you'll see the title of the different um, audio files. And this is seven dot baseline dash F sharp zero. And then you'll see it says dot wav. And then down the bottom here, you'll be able to see the, the file name. So it's a dot wav file. So that's a digital audio file. And if we have a look here, we can see that it is 44.1 kilohertz at 24 bit. So slightly better than typical CD quality. And it's two channel audio. So that means it's stereo audio. It's not mono. So mono would mean that there is no difference between left and right. Um, stereo means that there is. This sound could still be a mono sound, but it is being recorded as a stereo sound because Ableton generally, or actually all of the audio tracks are always stereo tracks. You don't distinguish between mono or stereo. You can make sounds either stereo or mono if you choose to, but um, the tracks by default, they're just stereo. Cool. So that is what audio is. It's basically a saved um, digital file inside of our computer. And then when we play it back, it's being converted to the analog world and it's coming to our ears. Okay. So when you hear people talking about digital and analog, um, you, you'll hear a lot of debates about which one's better. Um, at the end of the day, everything has to turn back into analog eventually. Um, digital is obviously very precise um, and analog is, let's say, less consistent, but we do enjoy the sound of it potentially uh, more because the character of the sound tends to be a little bit more organic and typically also a bit warmer, whereas a digital source can be much more, let's say, detailed and can generally be quite a bit brighter. Um, so that's a comparison of what audio and MIDI are, and it's also a bit of a, a, bit of a sort of breakdown of what digital and analog are, uh, because it is important to understand what's really going on here. So that is audio and MIDI inside of Ableton Live. If you would like to learn more about audio clips and MIDI clips, right now I'll have a video that'll pop up in the right-hand corner that will talk to you about the differences between a MIDI clip and an audio clip, just so that we go into a bit more detail. I'll describe what the stuff down here is. Um, and then I'll also give you some instruction on how you can cut them up, move them around both the session view and the arrangement view. Thanks very much for watching this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. It helps me reach more people and I will see you in another video.